All right, everybody, welcome back. We're going to talk about two gas laws, Boyle's Law and Charles' Law. We are going to talk about how this relates back to the kinetic molecular theory um, and do some practice problems. Whenever we are looking at gases, there are a few variables that we consider. So we look at volume, we look at temperature, we look at pressure, and then we also look at the number of molecules. For Boyle's Law, we relate volume to pressure, and for Charles' Law, we relate volume to temperature. So with Boyle's law, we are looking at volume times pressure is equal to a constant. What this means is that volume and pressure are inversely related to one another, um, so that as volume increases, then the pressure will decrease, given that the temperature and the number of molecules stays the same. Same thing's true, so if pressure increases, then volume decreases, as long as temperature and number of molecules stays the same. If we're comparing the same gas but in two different scenarios, then we use the equation V1P1 equals V2P2. Uh, and so this is the equation that we will use whenever we're doing problems using Boyle's Law. So this relates back to like if you put a marshmallow in a syringe and you cap it off and you pull it out, if you're increasing the volume, so that's what this is showing here, you're increasing uh, the volume, you're also decreasing the pressure, and in the case of the marshmallow, it will expand because the gas is expanding. Um, if you push down and you compress it, then the volume of the gas decreases and the pressure de uh, um, increases. Okay, This is very important when we look at scuba divers, so scuba divers, as they go uh, further down, um, the pressure is going to increase. Now, because they're um, going to have compressed air, um, their lungs are actually going to end up staying the same size, but the uh, volume or the gas is compressed. And so as you go down, it's compressed more, meaning that you can fit then more gas into um, the lungs. So what's really important when diving is that whenever you come back to the surface, now the pressure is decreasing. And so the volume of the gas can expand. So if you hold your breath, then you have a lot of molecules of gas inside the lungs and the volume of the gas will expand and it can actually damage the lungs and over inflate them. And so it's important to breathe normally um, as you're coming up. So if we look at practice problem, um, a gas has a volume of six liters uh, with the pressure at four atmospheres. If the pressure decreases to one atmosphere, what will the final volume of the gas be? I always think it's good to predict what you think the answer should be. Um, so if our volume one is 6.0 liters and our pressure one is 4.0 atmospheres, our pressure two is 1.0 atmospheres, and then we're solving for our volume too. So if we're making a prediction, we should predict that the volume is going to increase because the pressure is decreasing. So the pressure is decreasing, so we should see the volume increase. So if we plug in these numbers, we would have 6.0 liters for V1, 4.0 atmospheres, and then we would have P2 time, oops, sorry. Then we would have one atmosphere times V2. So we'll divide everything by one atmosphere. So we cancel out and then cancel out on this side. So we'll have 24 liters will be equal to volume two. This makes sense. The volume has increased from the initial volume, which makes sense based on Boyle's law. So for Charles' law, we're looking at volume over temperature will be equal to a constant. So this means that volume and temperature are directly related to one another. So as volume increases, temperature also increases, as long as pressure and number of molecules is staying the same and kept constant. So if we're comparing the same gas in two different scenarios, um, a before and after scenario, then we would use V1 over T1, oh my, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So this is what happens whenever, if you have a balloon and it's outside in the hot air and then you bring it into air conditioning and it gets smaller, this is because uh, the temperature has decreased, so the volume also has to decrease because the molecules aren't moving quite as fast, so they're not um, bouncing off the container quite as much. This also explains how a hot air balloon works, um, because as you expand or as you increase the temperature, the volume of the gas has to expand in order to keep that pressure constant. So if we do a practice problem, um, a sample of gas has a volume of 2.80 liters at an unknown temperature. So 2.80 liters will be V1. When the sample is submerged in ice water at 
0 degrees Celsius, so that will be temperature 2, the volume will decrease to 2.57 liters. So we need to find T1. So our prediction, we see this. So our volume 2 is going to decrease, which means that our temperature 2 has to have decreased from our temperature 1. So we should expect our temperature 1 to be increased compared to temperature 2. We need to convert from Celsius to Kelvin. So we can add 273.15 um, would be the temperature in Kelvin. So if we take a look at this problem here, we can rearrange our equation. And so V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. We'll go ahead and rearrange and solve for T1, which is here. Plug in our numbers and we should find that our T1 is equal to 297 degrees Kelvin, which is an increase from temperature two, which is 273 Kelvin. Um, if you then convert that to Celsius, you would have 24 degrees Celsius. As we look at temperature, remember that temperature is the average kinetic energy of molecules. Um, Again, the temperature has to be measured in Kelvin because it does not have any negatives, and so it helps um, all of those numbers to work out in our math problems. What I want you to do is go ahead and summarize Charles and Boyle's laws and explain these relationships based upon the kinetic molecular theory, which we talked about in our last set of notes. All right, so Boyle's law relates to the kinetic molecular theory because um, that theory talks about collisions and how particles will move until they collide with something else, and that's what's going to create pressure. So since volume and pressure are inversely related, as the volume gets smaller, the number of collisions will increase, which makes sense then that the pressure will also increase. For Charles' law, we are looking at how volume and temperature are directly related to one another. So as one goes up, the other one goes up as well. Um, for this example, whenever we look at temperature, so if we increase the temperature, that increases the kinetic energy of the particles. That means that they are going to move faster. And in order to maintain, so this will increase the number of collisions, which would increase the pressure. So in order to maintain a constant pressure, then what has to happen is that the volume of the container has to expand so that the collisions aren't quite as frequent and that the pressure stays the same from the initial scenario to the second scenario.